Jane Ma, and welcome to Sky Silks. I'm a hand weaver and dyer, and I specialise in silk. Uh, I also create Arashi Shibori textiles, and I'll show you that in a moment. So originally I was a spinner and dyer, which I've been doing for many, many years, and then became interested in hand weaving. So I took some courses and learned all sorts of different weaving techniques and tried out uh, weaving with wool and cotton and linen and then discovered silk. And I fell in love with the silk. It's a natural fibre. It's warm in the winter and cool in the summer. It drapes beautifully and it reflects the light and takes the dyes beautifully. So um, that became my passion and I've specialised in silk, hand weaving and dyeing textiles ever since. So I got into Arashi Shibori through another uh, hand weaver who uh, introduced me and she taught me how to do it. Shibori is the Japanese art of resist dyeing and there are many different forms. So Arashi Shibori is a form of pole wrapping and it produces diagonal lines. So this is one of the scarves and you can see hopefully there's diagonal lines um, of colours um, and these are created by the way that it's wrapped on the pole and the way that you dye the fabric either before or after or both. So um, Shibori has been around since the 8th century in Japan and Arashi Shibori was developed in the 1880s. Uh, so Originally, it was done on a long wooden pole, which is not very practical in a modern studio. So I use a heat resistant plastic uh, pipe to do this. And hopefully you can see on here, there um, is fabric wrapped on here, which is actually two different scarves. And this is finished and ready to come off. So I'll carry on unwrapping this so that we can have a look at it. So the, this starts out with a plain white scarf that has been hemmed and then I will um, dye it the colours that I want underneath. Uh, then it needs to be bound and I use a really strong thread that um, won't stretch and uh, won't break uh, to bind the fabric on the pole. See it's starting to come off. And the colours that you see at the top are the overdyed colours. So on the whole, we can't actually see what's inside until it's unwrapped. So this is the magic and the mystery of Arashi Shibori. Nearly there. And you can start to see it coming off. And you can get many different effects. You can, uh, sometimes I bind the threads more than once, uh, sorry, bind the fabric more than once, and uh, you can get crisscross lines and diagonals and so forth. So this is a scarf that's come off that really doesn't show an awful lot, but when you start to open it up, you'll start to see the colours underneath. Uh, So there we go, and hopefully you'll be able to see the pleats. And it's been under dyed with oranges and reds and yellows, golds, and then over dyed with plums and maroons to give this rich and depth of colour. Um, and you can see that they move and float. And depending on how you tie them, you can get many different effects. So with this one, for instance, I want to open it out, it'll just throw over. I can spread the pleats out or I can pull them up. So there's another one here that's in under dyed in greens and over dyed in rusts and maroons, like a leaf. So you can get all with this one. And I also use a. So this is. Uh, really dainty looking um, and if I show you across the black of my jumper it really shows up 
and you can wear it as a shawl or you can tuck it in or wear it in many different ways. So they're really versatile, very elegant, and they can be a real statement piece and they're so tactile. So I'll show you how to bind them. So I'll start with the plain white hemmed uh, scarf. And then this one I've dyed up in greens, various greens, and then just folded it ready. Uh, so to get the diagonal lines, we start binding on the corner. There was me when I get the thread. So we just need a really strong thread. I'll secure there. And starting on the diagonal, once I get going, I can show I'm going to show you. So the trick. Okay. Right, just getting it started. So the skill here is to keep an even tension and also to bind uh, at very even intervals to make sure that you get even pleats coming. So it's done by eye and a bit of practice. And we keep going. So as you can imagine, this takes quite a while to do. So first you've got to dye your scarf. If you want um, a sort of rich depth color like this with many uh, colours underneath. Then it needs to be bound and pleated. And in a sec, I'll be able to. You'll see this. Pushing it down will create the pleats. If you can see, they've started to come now. can't hear anything so I'm assuming you're still all there. Okay. So, I was just thinking how physical textiles can actually be sometimes. I never knew. I was looking at kind of the force and the strength in your arm. It looks like a really current great tension. I never expected to see a technique used like this in, you know, in textiles. Yeah, so it does take quite a long time to do, not just the binding, but first you've got to dye it, then you bind it and then pleat it up, push it up. And then, um, let me do this, then I have to over dye it and you can get the different colours on the ridges and the dips then. So this is just done quite quickly and normally it takes a bit more time for more. So it's also quite physical putting it down, quite hard work. So that will build up until you've got the whole scarf on. I'm just going to secure that. Uh, so when it's all bound, then I use the foam paint brushes with the dyes and can just paint them on either a single colour or multiple colours, depending on what effect I want. Then it needs to be steamed, the dyes and the pleats. And then the worst bit is it takes up to two days to dry and you can't look at it and you don't know what you've created until it's completely dry, which is why it's always such um, a treat to unwrap and see what patterns you've got. So these are available on the um, online website, Handmade in Britain. And the Arashi Shibori scarves are all I can't <laughs> In fact, they're all £77, which is an introductory offer um, for this new range. I also have um, ties that I've made with the same technique, but obviously iron flat. So you can see the patterning um, and they're hand stitched to create the tie. So this is a standard width tie in the Arashi Shibori pattern. I also have skinny ties, which I've got in the Arashi Shibori stripe, but also in this pattern, which is the Sky Clouds pattern. Um, and they're both available in both widths. So those are handmade silk ties, hand dyed and stitched. 
and those are £47 each on the Handmade in Britain Chelsea um, online event website. So the other thing, obviously I'm a hand weaver, so I have a range of uh, silk hand woven scarves. So this one is part of the Croft collection. We have a Croft here on the Isle of Skye near Lumbeggan. And um, I've taken colours from the Croft. Um, these are the colours of the beech trees in the autumn that we've got around our Croft. And I've also got uh, used a herringbone weave, which gives the leaf pattern uh, to show that off. And they're hand finished in uh, hem stitched and with a little fringe on the end. So they're all hand dyed. Um, I dye everything I do myself. And this is a hand painted scarf. So I use different techniques depending on the effects that I want. Um, they break beautifully and they take the colours so wonderfully. Silk just floats with it. So that's one of the craft collection. And I'll show you. A few more of the items. I have a misty. Sorry, Jane, you've mentioned kind of, you know, the Isle of Sky and some bits are called Cloud. I'm seeing a lot of blue in the collection. So I suddenly see that big pop of orange and those autumn colours. How much does where you live really influence the collection that we're viewing now? Also, the collection we can see, you know, through how many Chelsea online? Massively. Um, the Isle of Skye is known as the Misty Isle, so we have a lot of misty colours, which is this range. Um, but we also have brilliantly sunshiny days, and so the colours on the trees where the beech leaves this year are fantastic, turning those gorgeous autumn colours, and in the sunshine they look wonderful. Um, we've got you know, all the greens on the croft, um, we have the most fabulous sunsets that last for ages and have incredible colours, so that's my next collection that's on the loom, and I'll show you in a minute. Um, so the Misty collection, the Misty Isle, um, is all soft blues, greys, silvers, and some of these are, these are resist dyed and hand painted, and I mix the techniques depending on the effect I want. So today we've got a really blustery, windy day with the mist down. We have mountains outside, but you can't really see much of them today, the, the mist hiding them, um, and lots of rain. So these colours are very much influenced by that. But on the, the sunny days in spring and the autumn days, um, the colours are very bright here. So um, I'm really looking forward to the next set of weaving, which is all the sunset colours, really strong, bright, vibrant colours. Uh, so the other set of weaving that I have are the fine woven scarves. Now these are, everything I do is in silk, uh, but these are woven at between 60 and 80 ends per inch or threads per inch. But they're really fine. If you can see, they're really floaty and drapey. Um, and uh, this is done with a dip dyeing and a resist technique on one side and then um, a skein dyed, uh, dip dyed technique on the other. So I get streaks on one side and I get the clouds on the other. And also it's a two in one twill, so the effect is slightly different on each side. So it's really versatile and depending on how you wear it, you can show off one side or the other, the stripy side, the cloudy side, so you can get different effects again, which I love. Some of these have a real iridescence where I've crossed it with um, a contrast colour and they shimmer, especially when the light of the sunshine catches them. So with my scarves, I start with just the plain natural silk. So I don't know if you can see how fine that is. Probably not on the camera. Um, but really fine silks and I hand dye everything. So that, um, you can really recognise my work from the way that I dye the fabrics and the, the yarn. So how do you dye it? Because I've got visions of you kind of outside with big buckets of cold water <laughs> and dye in the elements, you know, on the misty, you know, the misty isle of sky. You know, what, what really goes in there? Not all your trade secrets, but, um, you know, dyeing. Again, you know, why is that important to, you know, to you? Right. Um, 
it's really important to me to have my own stamp on the cloth and to to feel that connection with the textile so on some of these the painted warps it is literally painted the warp is laid out on a surface and i have pots of dye with um lots of, of different pots with different colors in and i will paint along the warp threads before they go on the loom um, i can control the colors i can blend them and i get an effect that is um unique to me um, many weavers will buy in yarns already coloured which means it's the same colour from the front to the back of the loom so every scarf is the same thread colour throughout the length of the scarf but for mine they change and I love being able to change the, the colours as it goes through the scarf um, in patches, shorter ones or longer lengths and um, it's just fun. <laughs> it's just so much more fun than sticking with a single colour thread. And you get all these wonderful effects. Can't get any other way. And also I have um, a traditional hand loom, which I'll show you in a sec. And um, it's not mechanised. So that means it's down to the skill of the weaver to create an even fabric and straight edges. It's not done by a machine, by the loom itself. It's only done by the weaver. And I love that connection to the cloth that um, I can influence every element of how I make it and create something completely new, unique. No two are ever the same. I, I always make um, each scarf completely different. Uh, so every scarf where I have a run on the loom, of 10 or 12 scarves, each one will be slightly different in colour, in weave um, or in the weft that goes across it. Use these. So shall I show you around the studio to, um, so you can see some of the other... I'd love you for you to show us around um, the studio. Um, we've got about um, we've got about five five minutes, so it'd be wonderful to have a look and then come back to the collection. But yes, no, please do. That's fine. Let me show you. These are some more of the hand-woven scarves. So we've got, um, I don't, yeah, can you see greens from the croft in the spring? the colours of the spruce trees, the mosses and lichens, some more of the autumn colours coming through. Um, and again, sort of um, colours of the, the rowan trees, um, berries in the autumn, blackberries just turning and the rowan berries that we have here, the rowan berries in English. So then we've got the Misty Isle ones. We've got slate blue colours, colours coming and going, slightly softer on one side than the other, silvers, two tones. So these are all um, suitable for men and women, um, can be worn in different ways. The blues, the reds of the rowan berries, but we've got quite a lot. Um, they're planted on the sky a lot because they keep the witches away if you have them at the gate. So there are many places with uh, rowan trees here. These, and then we've got some hanging up. Lots of colours of the lock. Um, we're surrounded by water and lots of locks in the sea. So hopefully you can see the sheen coming on here and the drape. Um, and then we've got some more stormy backgrounds with the rowan trees. And we've got some of the Arashi Shibori, different colours where we've got pinks and uh, deep, rich purples. Some more autumn colours on the croft. And then we've got lots of different, see down at the bottom, the different Arashi Shibori scarves with many patterns, um, bonds. Um, and these are fascinating because you take a quick look at them and you think it's one colour and when you look closer you find lots of others. So and then we've got another one of fine silk which is these watery minty colours and the lavender and this is a real shot silk with the turquoise jades and the lilacs in it. Really soft and floaty and very luxurious. Um, and some of these are real statement pieces with the um, pleated scarves 
you can dress them up or dress them down. They're so versatile. And then we've got a selection of ties, which um, despite lockdown, it seems that they're really in demand. So we've got, um, again, the skinny ties in the both of the patterns. Hopefully you can see those. And then really unusual colours for ties. Um, they're all pure silk and all hand stitched. Lots of ones and some of the striped ones as well. And then over here we've got the loom. So hopefully you can see this is a Scandinavian floor loom. Um, totally uh, manual. So I'm just in the middle of threading up all these uh, purples and blues and then later it's pinks and oranges and yellows, sunset colours. So I've got a few hundred threads to thread for the, for the next set of scarves, so that'll take me some hours. And then I can get on with weaving um, some really bright, vibrant scarves that uh, I'll get up on site as soon as I can. So um, hopefully I've covered everything. Is there anything I've missed, Alice? No, I think it's been really wonderful. I mean, I really feel I've learned you know, something new, but gosh, look at the size of your loom. <laughs> <laughs> goodness me it goes on thank you look at that panning wow goodness me right thank you so much you, you've got such a really interesting collection and the colors and the vibrancy but how it you know how it connects to to where you're based it's wonderful and to actually see you go through you know the different pieces that you have for the collection and really make them come alive you know, thank you so much, Jane, for your time. It's been really lovely um, to go around your workshop, you know, and to see you in, in person. So, so really big thank you there. Thank you, Alice. And I was just going to say, um, I've um, signed up to do a live chat from four o'clock today. So if anyone's watching and has got any questions or want to chat, I'll be on live chat on the site from 4 p.m. today. So thank you, everyone. <laughs> and I hope it's been interesting. Oh, that's great, and um, oh, one, and again, thank you so much, Jane from Smart Sky Skills. And she said she'll be on chat, and she'll be on chat for the next um, couple of days as well. So if you do miss the four o'clock, don't panic. Do leave a message, and the next time Jane pops on, she'll be able to answer your question. Um, so you can, of course, log on to Handmade Chelsea online, and you can find Jane and her beautiful work and look through those. So everything we've talked about here is for sale.